Hey folks, Guay. Today I, I want to talk about a problem that the church has. It's, it's a big problem. It's a massive, massive problem. And it's a massive problem that every denomination within the Christian church has. It's probably a problem that most religions find themselves experiencing, but for today, and because of my context, because of what I do, let's just talk about the Christian problem. We're addicts. We have a huge addiction. We have walked around quite happily for the last however many centuries with this great, big, smelly monkey on our back. Happily. We are happily addicted to power. We love power. We, we, li we, like, we, we, we don't know what to do without power. Power is such a huge part of our lives. Uh, power is, is so desperately important for us to feel, to feel good. Without power, uh, we, start getting the, we start getting the shakes. We are not, hmm, without power, we're not entirely certain how we're supposed to live anymore. We're not entirely certain what we're supposed to do with ourselves anymore. We feel kind of anxious. We feel kind of terrified. We feel kind of out of sorts. Now, I, I grew up, um, I grew up with addiction. Of course, I have my own addictions, and I grew up in a family of, with, with people who, who suffer from addictions. And I remember one day talking to my dad, who is, you know, I've, I think I've mentioned this before, my dad is one of the smartest and wisest people that I know. As a matter of fact, I really wish I had listened to every word my dad said as he said it because my life would be so much different <laughs> today than what it is. But then again, my life is pretty good today. So anyway, that's for another video. The bottom line is my dad and I were having a conversation one day about addiction. And he said something that we have to, we have to, we have to touch on today that is essential for dealing with addiction. And he said, you, you have to know you have it. You have to be willing to say, I have an addiction. You have to be willing to say, I am an alcoholic. You have to be able to say, I'm a gambling addict. You have to be able to say, I'm a drug addict. You have to be able to say, you have the addiction. If you're not willing to say you have the addiction, if you're not able to say you have the addiction, then you can't honestly and authentically deal with it because it becomes something that, well, it's no big deal. I can handle it. I know what I'm doing. I got this under control. But of course, you can't control an addiction. All you can do is, all you can do is, is learn how to live with the addiction and learn to move away from that thing that you're addicted to, to live your life without that thing you're addicted to. You have to learn how to say no to it and carry on. The church, as I said, we're addicted to power and we have to be willing to admit it. We have to be willing to accept it. And I, I, for what it's worth, I think this addiction of the churches, I think it has been there since, well, honestly, since Jesus' time, since before the crucifixion. We, looking through the gospel, you can see the seeds of our addiction to power. Right? James and John, their mom comes by. Can you imagine your mom coming by and talking to your boss? Anyway, their mom comes by and says, put one of my sons at your right hand and one on the left. Jesus says, I, I can't do that. That's not for me to do. And then he goes on and he tells us in this moment, one of a, there's a few times where he talks like this. He says, you know, those who want to be first in this world will be last in heaven. Those who are last in this world will be first in heaven. And he tells his disciples and everybody else that's listening, hopefully James and John's mother as well, but he tells them, you see, you see people of power lord that power over the others in this world, the other people in this world. He says, that's not us. That's not the life you're called to now. And if you choose to follow me, the life that you are called to is that you are going to be a servant to all you are going to be completely without power. 
You are going to be without prestige. You are going to be without status. You are going to be without wealth. You are, you are not going to be a powerful person, or in the case of the church, a powerful organization in this world. If you're following me, you are going to be a servant to everyone and everything. Your job is going to be to take care of people, to take care of creation. Your job is going to be a life of sacrifice. Your life is going to be a life of sacrifice, not of gain. Now the church, I suspect, like most addictions, our addiction came from a sincere desire for something good. I don't think anybody goes out and says, I really want an addiction today and I want it to destroy my life. I think we have a genuine and sincere desire for something good and and the thing that we become addicted to is, you know, it's that thing that gives us the, the short, clear path. It, it, it get, it, we think it's going to get us there quick, fast, and in a hurry. And sometimes it does. Sometimes it gives us exactly what we're looking for, but at a huge cost. Right? When the church first came about, after Jesus' resurrection, after his ascension, and, and the church began doing what the church was supposed to do, we know the church was persecuted. Right? The Jewish people hated the church. It's filled with heretics, bl blasphemers. The Romans, the Romans who had control over the, over the region that the early church existed, they didn't know what to do with us. They, they had no, they, they, we were some weird fringe cult that wouldn't stop growing, that kept growing and growing and growing. We became a real problem for them. As a matter of fact, most of the people we encountered in the world didn't really know what to do with us. And when you encounter something that you don't know what to do with, something you don't understand, the world did what the world still does today. We, we step on it. We want to destroy it. We're afraid of it. We can't understand it, so we're afraid of it, so we want to destroy it. And, and I think the church's desire for power came out of that. But then it quickly morphed. Because once we got that power, we went, hey, we can make people do the things we want them to do. We can make them be Christians. We can make them live the lives that we think we're supposed to live. As a matter of fact, we can write down a whole bunch of rules, a whole bunch of statutes. We, we can write down a whole bunch of canon. And we can say, hey, now that, uh, now that we got control, you need to live this way. kind of been downhill from there. That monkey, who I think probably started off kind of tiny and cute, it's become big and hairy and ugly and, and really smelly. And our addiction, our addiction to this power, it, it's caused us to cause an awful lot of harm in this world, even today. And, and it seems like we are gravitating we're gravitating. We're, we're, we're really, really hoping for that fix again soon. We really want to, to, to become an organization of power again just as soon as we possibly can because, well, this world's going to hell in a handbasket and only we can fix it. But that's not what we're called to do. We're called to be a servant. We're called to serve. We're called to love. We're called to provide. We're called to nourish. We're called to... Sacrifice, not control, not to use, not to exert power over others to have them live the way we think they should live. The church, quite honestly, I think, as flippant as I want to be about this subject, we really need to go back to those teachings of Jesus and recognize that he never calls us to places of power. As a matter of fact, he warns us against it. He tells us we are to avoid it. He tells us we are not to be an organization of power, a people of power. We are to be a people, a congregation of servants. And we are to be happy in that, in that role. We are to find our joy in that role. 
Whenever we hear the whisper of power, we got to hear it as that big smelly monkey saying, hey, just one more fix. It'll fix everything. It'll solve all your problems. And we have to reject it. We have to continuously, arduously persevere in our rejection of power and authority and control. We don't want it. We don't need it. And we can't afford it even if we did. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that we will all be able to embrace our role as servants, that we will all recognize it as enough, that we will recognize that being a servant of Christ is enough for us. It's all we need. No matter what may befall us, it is all we need. To serve our brothers and sisters is all that we need. Amen. Nemultus.